people who live a lie, um, the longer you live that lie, the more you have to protect it and right. the more you're willing to sacrifice to protect it. And, uh, I mean, that's the poison of the lie, right? It's like once you hold on to yeah. it, you got to build up all this shit around it to keep it solid. Well, one thing that, that I, that I kind of question about Gian Gomeshi, like, clearly he's guilty of being an asshole. Mm-hmm. But no doubt when, about that. But, but when you, <laughs> in my when opinion, you, when you look at, at uh, these kind of victim statements, you know, if you're into rough sex, you can find that community. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think did he, what did his ego just get in his way, and he thought he could go from zero to sixty with a new date? And go, oh, by the way, I'm going to punch you in the face now, and that's just normal. Uh, it's a mystery but, to like, me because he, as I say, like that lie or that part of his life was so so anathema to who he was publicly. What I can say about Gian is every single person that I saw him interact with and in my interactions with him personally, um, there were two modes. Right. There was seduce and dominate. And that's really the only two ways he knew how to communicate with people. Sure. And it was difficult to be around him for that reason. You never um, know which one you're going to get. Or... Yeah, and it just never was normal. There was always some... He was always trying to put you in a position that would strengthen his own. Right. And every conversation, every interaction was was a guilt trip or a manipulation or a compliment paid in order to get you to do something for him. Right. And he, was an, he is an exhausting person to be around. And, um, you know, I, I appreciate... Uh, his belief in me, I have to. I have to admit that you know he showed a lot of faith in me by getting me on the radio and letting me talk. Yeah. He's a very smart guy. I think he was brilliant at his job, and um, I think like everyone, you know, he's he's not one thing or the other. Right. You know, he's not a total demon and he's not a total angel. Love you. And I have to say that because then people say, well, "Do you guys actually hate each other?" And and I always reply, "Yes." <laughs> But he's definitely someone who, in my opinion, um, didn't know himself right. at all. Like, a- and was doing anything he could to protect the self he wanted to be. Right. You know? And that, that's a direct parallel to Rockefeller. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or to anyone who's got a secret, right? Yeah. That they're trying to keep. It gets exhausting yeah. to keep those secrets. Well, I, th- I think that's interesting that you probe it, because, like, Maya Angelou would like to say... Uh, She'd quote Terence like, nothing human can be alien to me. So mm. on the spectrum of human behavior, okay, well, <laughs> yeah. you, you, can, you, you can't always be a monster. I mean, you've got parents, you care about your parents, yeah. uh, you know. And love is not like, love is not a, mo- like, in my opinion, love is not, uh, love is not the, 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 the domain or the, the, like, the exclusive domain of the good. Yeah. You know, Hitler was in love with Ava Braun. Yes, he was. And, uh, and you know... And dogs. Yeah, like, it's possible <laughs> to be in, to be in love and be a really terrible human being. Right. And I think we all kind of want um, to feel like love is this holy thing. And I think love is a holy thing, and it's also a profane thing. And it can make you do beautiful things, selfless things. It can also make you do terrible, selfish things. Yeah. And a lot of what Stars has written about over the years and a lot of what we've examined is that notion, you know, is that um, that love does not uh, discriminate between... It's blind. Right. It, it, it comes in into everybody's life and no one has more of a right to it than anyone else, you know. 